Good Time Show. I'm your host, Damon Epps. Today, I'd like to introduce Robin Atkinson. She's the visionary leader and CEO of Interform, a dynamic nonprofit organization at the intersection of art, community, and fashion right here in Northwest Arkansas. And on March 28th through the 30th, we're about to have Fashion Week. Yet another Fashion Week. Another Fashion Week, which is a big deal. Okay, well, yeah. before we dive in, I've yes. been to Fashion Week. I yes. know um, about you. Um, we're semi friends. Um, so I would say I would say we're friends now. We're friends now. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. I mean, we you know we. I feel room. like it's a like. small room. I, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you know. Next, uh, you can invite me to dinner. I like I like yeah, food and absolutely. stuff. Being um, so, tell me about Interform. Yes. Uh, so Interform is a nonprofit organization that is uh, a long time in the making. It has been through like a lot of permutations, but to land where it is, is the um, Northwest Arkansas Fashion Week and an organization called the Arkansas Arts and Fashion Forum were blended into one. Um, and it focuses on sort of like three main pillars, which is learn, make, show. And we do work sort of anything that has to do with apparel, anything that has to do with fashion, Anything that has to do with visual arts, we'll do it. Like we will, sort of, those are sort of the boundaries we try to set on ourselves. Like we don't do music unless you want us to. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's but really. But there is music at the, at the fashion show. Yeah, there is. It's fine. And also like we, I don't know, we probably would. But um, we try to limit it to fashion and art just so it's, you know, coherent. But I think f- the main thesis of Interform is it's a place for people in the regional creative community to try it out. To express themselves. To try it out, right? Like, you you have to practice. You have to start from nowhere. You have to start bad. Um, and you have to, with repetition, over and over and over, learn a skill. And then maybe you're great at it, right? And But I think that in the region, there's we sort of very much focus on at wherever you're entering the conversation, come on in. Learn, make, show. You have to learn something, and then we make you test it, and then we make you show it to somebody because it's not real unless you've had to do it it's true. in public. Um, and whether So that could be fashion design or it could be curating. It could be – I mean, those are really the two main things. Okay. I was about to say fashion. And so, so – okay, so – Was that coherent? It was completely coherent. Yeah, okay, I mean, I understood it, and I don't know it very much. Um, Fantastic. So – are, is everyone that's part of Interform kind of a novice as far as getting no. in? No. So we have, like, all skill levels, right? We have professionals who've been in the industry for years and years and years, and then we have folks who have touched a sewing machine, like, the first time today, basically. And so we have these free educational courses that are, you know, it starts with introduction to sewing and then goes all the way to fashion design, and we'll really meet you wherever you are on your journey, and then as our cohorts get better, right, as the region, you know, we've been doing this for seven-ish years. So as the talent pool that we work with gets better, has done it more often, we'll also, like, skill up our courses. So we try to, like, grow with the skill set of the, of the cohorts. And so, you know, there are some people who come into programs who, like, Project Runway alumni, who are like, well, okay. I just want to... I don't know. I want an opportunity to like try some things out. So it's really is like a testing ground, right? Now you did say you you know several Project Runway people now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, are, yes. Are any of them from Arkansas? Uh huh. Uh huh. Kato Mamalu, who's been on like I don't know three or four seri- uh, seasons, she's based in Little Rock and she's on my board, and we've done so many shows together now. And it's really wonderful to work with somebody who's, like, such a pro because you know that whatever it is, it's going to be amazing. And you know that, like, whatever the lighting looks like, it's going to be great. Um, But part of the reason why we work so hard to make sure that the production value is really, really high on the shows is because we know that we're going to be spanning a skill set that's from, like, this is my first time ever on the runway to this is my 50th runway show and I do this in Paris, right? And in order for those two things to be coherent in the same space, you got to really make sure that, like, you've crossed your T's and dotted your I's from, like, a lighting sound sort of layout perspective. So what made you think of this? <laughs> so it's... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, excuse me. Open can of worms. Um. <laughs> uh, it's such a... It's like... 
it's kind of a long story. Do you want to like? Do you want to buckle up for like a? Kind I mean, of the it's, origin it's the story, story of it. Is, I mean, we're here. I mean, okay. I, I, it might be boring to you, but I feel like a lot of people don't know. Because I'm bar- it's so boring to me. It's, but it's, um, it's boring and embarrassing. Uh, no, well, maybe, probably parts of it. Okay. No, so we'll tell I, those parts. <laughs> I was an artist one thousand years ago, right? So, like, I helped start my first arts nonprofit when I was seventeen. So, I, and I said, I say You've that just to say, for a long time. I've been doing this for a really long time, and so. And when you say artist, I was a very bad painter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I had my first solo painting exhibition at 17. It was, you know, bad. But it was great because I was 17 and I was having an an art show and I sold paintings. Like, what an amazing, you know, what an opportunity to fail in public, right? (laughs) So... uh, Do you have your, um, do you have some of your art that we can look at? I, no. Okay. No, I don't. And even if I did, no, I don't. Okay. (laughs) Fair. Even if I did, no, I don't. Can I do some embarrassing Um, stuff? So... So yeah, so I, I I helped found this nonprofit when I was seventeen, and then art really was my sort of that was the industry I was in, and I went from painting to organizing to curating because it turns out I'm a lot better at getting people into a room than I am putting the things on the wall, right? And I really really enjoy giving other creatives opportunities to showcase themselves. Like it's just my favorite thing. It's just my favorite thing, and it's always been my favorite thing. So. I just keep doing it. But um, I had a kind of meteoric rise to a curatorial career through um, uh, a few strategic moves to New Orleans and to New York. And I kind of got where I needed to go. I got a master's degree. I was working in this sort of New York art community, and I hated it. Oh. I hated it. What did you hate miserable. about it? All of it. Everything. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> Truly. Um, Because it was just because it was brutal or just just, people are terrible? For me, yeah. People are terrible. It's the hardest thing about, I mean, look, I love New York and I love LA. Yeah. When you, people are so snooty. I mean, when you get into like their little thing and you just, you're trying to break in, nobody helps you. You're supposed to to just, just suffer. Well, and I, I didn't realize that you were supposed to be much more. Like, I'm like a little feral, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I'm just a little, like, I grew up on a farm. Like, I need to go into a field. I want to, I don't want to follow your etiquette rules. Like, I want to, I want to show up later. Maybe I don't want to show up. Like, I don't, you know, I don't. And then if you try to tell me that I have to behave a certain way, like, no, I don't. Mm, No, I don't. not very good at that either. And so that, you know, as a curator in New York, you really have to have, like, a certain social skill set that I could, like, try on. I could put the mask on, but I would, like, dying inside. And I also just felt like I didn't want to spend my life making already famous people's work more valuable. Like, I didn't want to do that. I wanted, I wanted to create access for other people into okay. an industry. And that's not what New York is for. And New that York was kind of – that was f- – because you wanted some of your art maybe through in deep no, down inside? No, no, no. I mean, I think what it, it's just that it's such a rarefied, you know, stratus of people who are allowed to access careers in art. Um, and I've always been really fascinated with, like, well, why this person and not this person? Right. Right. And, I, and a lot of it's luck. And or like, who's your daddy? Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? And hey. I, do, who's your daddy? <laughs> who's your daddy? It's Next me. on the podcast, who's your daddy? <laughs> it's me. I'm your daddy. Uh, oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I like p- getting people access to the opportunity to be in that world was what I was interested in. And then I got into the world, and I was like, oh, we're not doing that. We're actually not trying. We're pulling the ladder up behind ourselves, right? Like we're not trying to get more people in the door. We're trying to make what's already behind the door more expensive. For people who own islands. Right. And that just wasn't what I wanted to be when I grew up. Right. right? And it was a very, like, you know, I had a whole, what am I going to do now? Because I'm, I, my entire career was to learn to do this one very specific thing. And I was pretty good at it, but I didn't want to do it anymore. Right. So. Another pain. So I came home, right? Because I'm from here originally. Um, and. Which part? I grew up in Silent Springs, which is like forty-five okay. minutes. Like Everyone right talks on about Silent Springs right now that it's the place to it's the place to start uh, buying property. Sure, but, but yeah, yeah. Um, I grew up right on the Illinois River. It was amazing. It was idyllic. I had like thirteen <laughs> dogs. It was amazing. It was like wonderful. I really do think that like very formative for me. But it's also one of the reasons why like I don't want to, I don't want to go to your dinner party. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, uh, 
I also want to go on a hike. I want to go kayaking. Do you know what I mean? I want to disappear for three weeks and then come back and like submit my budget. I don't want to tap dance. Anyway, so um, when I came back, it was very like, what am I going to do now? I got to, what am I going to become a lawyer? Become a hairstylist? Like, what is my, what? Oh, wow, that's, that's quite, quite, I mean, quite whatever. A, quite a choice. What are you going to do? Stylist or a lawyer? I mean, I could have done both, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think either one. Um, I think one would probably be a lot less miserable than the other. But um, <laughs> legal cuts. So, <laughs> so I, I mean, wait, I, got, I distracted myself. It basically comes down to what was I going to do now? I have a skill set. What's my skill set? Well, I'm good at building organizations. I'm good at working in the nonprofit sort of arts administration space. And I'm okay. good at founding things. Like I'm a serial founder of things. I founded a thing in New Orleans. I founded a thing in New York. Like I'm, I'm a builder. And so Northwest Arkansas Fashion Week had existed and it kind of fell in my lap in a roundabout way. And I thought, sure, sure. Why not? Let's see. I don't know anything about fashion. I bet it can't be that hard. I, there's a lot of this in my life. It's like, it can't be that hard. Yeah. Give me that. I mean, what? Give me that hard. Um, and it was, uh, it was like the best decision I've ever made because it turns out that I, the all the things I wanted to do in art, like all of the access and the visibility and the representation and the opportunity, like all of that that I couldn't do in art, I can do in fashion, which is amazing. So I'm having the time of my life. But it really just comes down to. Fashion is art, okay? Same thing. It is. I mean, I mean, there's, it's, yeah, you're wearing it. It's like a high priced commodity, you know, that is, that it has value because it's scarce. So, you know, sort of. Yeah. Um, and then apparel is a different thing. But, you know, uh, I thought, you know, fashion's art. Let's see, let's see what's happening. Are there fashion designers in Arkansas? I doubt it. There were. I was so happy to hear that. So I really just went about trying to create an opportunity where, like, if you were a person who was interested in being a designer of some capacity or creating art that went on human bodies, mm -hmm. let's get you an opportunity to put that in front of the public somehow, somewhere. Super fun. Um, and then, you know, through the decision to do runway shows, you also get to make a lot of choices about, like, who are you representing? Who are the clothes on? Like, who are the models? Who, you know, who's involved is a really... That's a powerful set of choices to make. And I thought, well, nobody knows what I'm going to do. There's no expectation for like, oh, it has to be like this. So I just made a lot of really specific choices and ran with it. And it's been so fun. So but the, like, the short answer is because I saw a gap in the market and because I thought maybe this will be a fun way to get creatives in front of the community and to show the community back to itself. Right. So that's why. Super fun. Well, the show is fun. The show is a lot of fun. It's so wonderful. And it's like, I mean, it's so I say I say this sometimes like short of a graduation ceremony. Mm -hmm. Name another time that that many people walk in front of that many people and get clapped for. I know uh, a couple of my buddies walked mm -hmm. in the runway. Tom yeah. Holman and uh, yeah. my buddy Clint Schaff. They yeah. were uh, both both yeah. both walked the runway. Yeah. Um, it's like riding a roller coaster. It really is because you're in line for a really long time. You're waiting and waiting and waiting, and then you get out there, and it's so nerve wracking and awful, and it's over in thirty seconds. But it's fun. People it's, love it. It's a very exhilarating. I do. I I really had a good time with it. What do we What do we open to? What do we expect this year? So you know. And do you like all the fashion, or do you? Just... Uh, contractually, yes. It's like, 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 how do you feel about both of your children, right? Like, right. <laughs> it's like I like them both. Um, They're both wonderful. Yeah, light of my life. All of the, all of it's good. Um, it's sort of, you know, it's like, what's it doing? Like, why is it there, right? So if it's, if it's a student who this is the first time they've ever gotten in front of an audience, and this is their first time to do runway, and they're like, yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it because like look at them trying right and like look at them learning and look at them gaining exposure and like look at them like living their best lives. So we love that. Um, but and then there's designers who are you know showing in New York and showing in Paris and who are like blowing your mind with really amazing fashion concepts. And I also love that. Right. But it's just a different thing. So um, this season it's going to do you know we we've kind of got a you know we've got a, a rhythm to these things. We've done a lot of them now. And um, we always like to focus on sort of like high end and then beginners and try to blend them. So our students from the educational programs will be on the runway. 
and okay. then we'll. And have how many students? Like, so it's it's a whole school like program. 60. Tell me about the program of the school. Yeah. So I think we have like between sixty and eighty students right now, and they're. Free. Do they all start at the same time? I guess is there a time we, when you guys enroll? Yeah. So they're all free to the public, and they are all. Uh, they all kind of start on a cycle of they end at Fashion Week, right? So okay. um, the next round of classes will start probably in April. And then they'll go until their show in November. And then the okay. next set of classes will start in December, and then they'll go until their show in June. So, um, so do you have Fashion Weeks in different cities? Because this Fashion Week's in Bentonville. Mm -hmm. It's the only one I know of. Um, we have done them in Fayetteville. Okay. In the past. And um, we've gone to like a funny schedule where on, what is it? It's 2024. On even number years, we do a spring and a fall show. And then okay. on odd number years, we do the fashion art biennial, which is the entire month of June. And so there's a runway show in the middle of that. But then there's also like exhibitions and pop-ups and stores. And like it's just like a lot of stuff. Got it. Um, is that the one we did the other I day? Because you have a bunch of stuff in Springdale and all the... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that... Okay. Yeah, so yeah, that's... Okay. Yeah. Got it. That's Yeah. That's called assembly. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, so there's like a cadence to it and a rhythm and, you know, yeah, all the students start at the same time. And then you don't have to be a student to get on the runway. You can just also apply to be on the runway. So there's an application process as well. Um, we also have a designer residency program, which is a good way to get on the runway. So it's like if you've gone through a lot of educational classes from us, or if you have experience from another, like you went to college for it, or you've been sewing for 700 years, you can enter into like a more advanced thing, which is called the Emerge Designer Residency Program. Okay. And that will start in April and show in November. So we only do that once a year because it's a lot of it's a lot of work. But it's a lot. We have a lot of programs. It's I Okay, am so sixty people mm -hmm. and all um so not all of them get to showcase their design. Yeah. All of them get one thing on the runway. Okay, so all of okay, so when I'm watching the runway yeah. and I'm sitting there mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not one designer that's walking out. No, sometimes it's an entire class. Okay, sometimes. So some yeah. of them that are yeah. just all over the place. Mm -hmm. some Accurate. Of them are, yeah, some of them are all over the place because it's 40 people. Got it. Okay, because yeah. I was like, this, this, yeah. when there was, I was like, none of this necessarily this goes together. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, um, so when the, you know. And we, what night is it? Because there's different nights. Yeah. There's, what what so is it? So the inner students are every night. We mix them in. Okay. Between all the shows. Um, but Thursday night has three Project Runway alumni, which is exciting for us. They're not from the region. Um, they're coming in to do the Thursday night show, and they're partnered with, like, community groups that are doing shows as well. So, like, there's an organization called Rainbow Fashion, and it's focused specifically on providing gender-affirming clothes to the trans community. And, okay. you know, they have a runway show. It's a very different kind of show, obviously, but it's, I think – for us, an important thing for them to have an outlet to for do. Sure. Um, and then there'll be students. So it's very, Thursday is very community oriented, right? It's a very feel good show. Yeah. And then Friday is sort of more of an avant garde show. It's like, okay. probably you're not gonna buy this stuff. Probably you're not gonna wear this out. This is, this is experimental. This is art. This is high fashion. Like it's sort of more poofy. <laughs> You know what I mean? Which is my favorite. Like the poofier, the better in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, the fun. I mean, just. It's the fun. Give me. Give me all the tool. Um, I can't remember what I saw last year, but I was, I, it was a lot. It's a lot. It was something that it's a I lot. was like, wow, that's that's something. Mm -hmm. um, but I liked it. Uh, and you know, and if you Some didn't, of it I didn't, that's but okay. I, you know, yeah. I would tell the person I loved it. I mean, again, because it's like, really, the opportunity to fail in public is the absolute best way to be better at what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In and every I mean, facet of your life. Yeah. Like, from a queen of having done some failing, <laughs> like, <laughs> it really is. There's just no better way to to learn to be better because if you're only if you're never taking risks right if you're never putting something maybe half-baked out there you're not going to understand the consequences of putting something half-baked out there right mm -hmm. and so and it's not that we don't have like a quality control we absolutely do right we absolutely do like vet for quality for established designers but when it comes to student work like, I want you to have an opportunity to do your very, very best and learn from it. Right. I don't want, I mean, we're not going to let you phone it in. Right. Right. You know, but if you did your best and you're learning, I am supportive. So, are you almost like a teacher or the dean of students? Uh, sort of. Right. I, funny story, I don't know how to sew. 
That's what that was gonna be my next question. I was like, because I find the whole sewing thing. These people it's that can just terrifying to me. <laughs> just just needles? And a lot of it it oh. looks I would sew my hand to no, every sheet. No, it's, it ahead. spooks me. I, I did they did make me finally take a class because they were like, Hey, come here. You've been doing this for seven years. Could you just maybe learn just, to sew one you thing? Know, a hem. I did. Okay. I think I did. I think I did great, actually. But no, so I have a woman that works for me named Basna Chetri, and she is the VP of programs, and she f- is, in a previous life, she founded the first ever fashion institute in Nepal. So, like, she has built a fashion school already in her life, and she's kind of building a fashion school underneath the umbrella of Interform. Mm-hmm. And so she is, you know, a really, really established teacher, and she does kind of run it as a college. I mean, the goal for us is to expand into a more professionalized kind of setup, but things take time. So So all of these people, Uh you do a lot of fashion shoots with, or is this just Uh kind of something you guys Well, so we don't do as many as we used to. This was an interesting case. So this was made in 2021. Okay. And so we were supposed to have a fall runway show. Oh, but the COVID's. COVID's. So we made a fashion film instead. And it almost oh, killed fun. us. Oh, we did. It almost <laughs> yeah. killed you. It almost killed us. But it was wonderful. And I mean, like, a great thing. Again, like, we tried something. Are we the, would you hire me to make your fashion film if you're, like, in a, you know, in another market? I don't know that I'm your top choice. Have I done I it like, now and I have more I experience? Feel like you, I feel like you killed yeah, it. absolutely. No, I mean, it's, oh, well, and we hired, like, really amazing videographers. And I, the, the team's amazing. But, you know, having learned that a film with no dialogue of any variety or other information that is an hour long that is just like vignettes of fashion why not do it that way again oh. but i think that it was a really valid and wonderful thing to do well you got footage for forever forever for a just you would the number of images i have in my drive so this nonprofit. Mm-hmm. um so the money comes in it, it mostly goes to the school and then also to fund the Mm-hmm. To fund the fashion, mm-hmm. to fund Fashion Week. Yep, yep, yes. That's super cool. So, okay, so my, I've been in art for a long time, okay. right? And I have seen a lot of different ways to run arts organizations over the years. And what I've never seen satisfactorily is like a self-supporting arts organization, right? The funding model in arts is like largely philanthropic, kind of no matter which way you slice it. And that's something that I sort of have trouble with. Like, I don't want to have to do that for the remainder of my days, right? I don't want to have to um, always be doing that kind of nonprofit fundraising. Um, And so for us, what we're trying to create is an organization that is self-sustaining, And the reason why we're able to do it in fashion is because fashion, unlike art, has a like a really viable, um, um, like high volume commercial side. Right. So we have an organ. We've just broken out a for profit subsidiary um, that focuses on. Okay, so you have a so you have a nonprofit, which is probably Interform. Right. And then you have a for profit side. Yes. Yes. Learning about this stuff. Yes. Fascinated by it. So our we have a subsidiary. Happy to talk about that. And the goal for the subsidiary is that it is it is a manufacturer. So it's a production facility in Springdale, but it also does product development and design, and it's all fee for service. And th- through growing that, and through growing this ability to for designers to sort of have an entry into a market that they wouldn't otherwise have, because getting your clothes made in the U.S. is almost impossible. Um, we're hoping to be able to self-support in our form, kind of like in perpetuity. So that's the goal in over time. And then once we are our own funders, we can just do whatever we want to do. Do you want to make a fashion film? Great. Do you want to do you want to turn it into the inner form fashion institute in downtown Springdale? Maybe, maybe we do. You know, it's just uh, super fun. So yeah. then this is kind of fun even for you because you are a curator. Mm-hmm. Say that right, correct? Yeah. Uh-huh. Right? yeah. Um. So now you can actually, if if a student does really well, you can choose their clothes uh-huh. or their style mm-hmm. and then replicate it and then go try to sell that design. Yeah. To well, obviously the with them, 
right? Yeah, with the, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, we're so. taking your contract. We own you now. You've signed up for Interform, but that um, and now all of your intellectual yeah, and property. Just is mine. so you know, you've signed an NDA, and mm-hmm. if you ever say this, we're close. We are done. Um, <laughs> that is not true. Do not take. <laughs> no, that. no, that's not true. Um, so the you know for me, there uh, one big difference between art and fashion is there's no real market for selling art in the region, right? But also, like, in the country. There's, like, two places where you can sell art, New York and Los Angeles. Okay, got it. And if you're not there, like, good luck, right, making a living being an artist, right? It's just a hard, it's a hard grind. But if you are... So it's hard to make a living here, even, with all the art stuff that's happening as an artist. I would say it's... Impossible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Not impossible. Right. Hard. Really hard. hard. Because there's not a collector class and there's not a secondary market. And why would I buy art as an investment if there's no secondary market? And, like, if you're buying art outside of New York, there is definitely not a secondary market. So it's hard, right? And people don't love to just throw money at artists. Okay. uh, I don't know what a secondary market means. Uh, Okay. So, like, say I buy a painting. It's a Rothko. And I buy it for so much money. I buy it for $20 million. And then I sit on it for 30 years. And then I sell it for $100 million. At auction. Okay. That's a secondary market. And so art as like an appreciable asset class. You didn't realize that like I was going to, we get into economics, we get into production. Like it's, you know, I mean, I've really thought about this stuff. (laughs) Turns out. Um, And I'm like, I'm like having the time of my life. But um, yeah, there's no, you know, it's, I'm okay, I don't, I don't want to spend $5,000 on this because it's not going to gain value. Okay. Right, and people who have that kind of money to spend five thousand dollars on art think about that, right? They think about investing. They think about like things that grow with value over time. That's why real estate's such a great investment, right? Because right. it's never not going to cost more later, right? Um, well, but unless it's unless, unless it, it doesn't, you know. I mean, yeah, the, the world is downtown Los Angeles, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's you know, there's there's wealthy. Um, so what was I talking about? Uh, I don't even remember. We were, ta- we were talking about we were talking about the school. We were talking about um your uh the oh, the, yeah, the, the for profit. Yeah, like, the for profit like, yeah, side. Okay. Yes. Sorry, Amazing. that was my like, how are we supposed to pay the bills? Yeah. So um yeah, so the the like the idea that I could be a fashion designer in the United States and I'm so skilled and I'm like my clothes are amazing and everybody loves them, but how in the world am I supposed to enter into a market? Like where like l- realistically, how am I supposed to get my garments to an audience if I can't access manufacturing. And you can't in the United States. There is no, like the apparel manufacturing ecosystem in the United States is like dead because we moved it somewhere else where it's much cheaper, right? And so if I don't have $50,000 to invest in building my line, then I have to sew everything myself. And if I have to sew everything myself, how am I supposed to have time to market myself? If I have to sew everything myself, how am I supposed to have time to have a storefront? And so it's just all these barriers to entry. But, like, for me, they seem like movable barriers, right? And in art, it was like, I don't know how to break these. These barriers are hard. I don't know how to fix these barriers. In fashion and apparel, I have, like, I think we can, some of these are movable, right? I think that we can sort of play with this if there's more access to manufacturing, right? If there's more access to product development. Um, If I can, if you can have $5,000 and start a line instead of $50,000, does that give you a leg up? And so, you know, and then another thing is, okay, say I do have $50,000 to start an apparel line. I'm going to have to order minimum 1,000 of something. What what am I going to do with it? I'm going to sell five of it. And then I'm going to have, you know, 1,000 things Mm -hmm. sitting in my warehouse paying rent on them with no way to get them to market. So it's like you have to start small, but you can't start small with factories overseas. So I don't know. So the, Super fun. the goal is, you know, build this market, provide this opportunity, and then hopefully self-fund. There's a lot of, we'll see. We'll see. There's a lot of we'll see involved. Have you chosen anybody yet? Or is it happening? For, for the, the storefront? For the, no, not for the storefront. For the... For the manufacturing. The manufacturing. What um, is that called? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. So the for profit's called Rhizome. Oh, that's what that is. That's what Rhizome I is. I just want you to know that I saw Ryz- Rhizome. Uh-huh. Rhizome? Yes. Let me just go to this real quick. Rhizome. Rhizome. Where was it? Right there. Uh-huh. Right there. On You're the, like, what is right? that is word? That, I legitimately was like, 
I don't read very well. And um, I so was, I need I, you to know that like I googled I it though. It's a, a very good word. Deep nerd. Okay, like yeah. deep, 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 deep nerd. Like it is just it is what it is, right? And I think I do. I think that like maybe I cosplay as not a nerd <laughs> okay. sometimes. But, yeah. Like. <laughs> So for me, the word rhizome is what it is, right, is it's how grass grows. So it's underground lateral roots that pop up plants. Oh, I found like a definition. It was like a Greek word that meant something. I mean, probably that too. Okay, fine. But what it really is, it's a term from biology. And I got it from a philosopher that I read because I am a nerd, man. But like, so for me, the logic tracks because I don't want to build a brand. I want you to build a brand. And I want to be the substructure that provides the opportunity for you to build a brand. So we want to be the rhizome, and we want you to get famous and make so much money, and then we'll manufacture your stuff, and that'll be great for us. And so think about, you know, grass. Those are all the brands. Those are all the successful brands that we'll support from behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cute. It's beautiful. I love that. I know. So and pretty. it's kind of a cool word as well. It has a Z It is it. very cool. Terry what feels, I was like, is that a ruby? What is that? What is <laughs> Is it a, do I polish it? Yes, absolutely. Um, 100%. Okay, so Rhizome, mm-hmm. is it in full effect yet? Or is it going to be full effect after the, or we don't know yet? So it has launched. So we're in phase one of launch. In phase one of launches, you can access manufacturing services. So I can make you as many shirts as you want, or as many okay. bike shorts as you want. Um, or you can come in, you have an idea for something that you want to make, it's drawn on a napkin, you slide it across the table, we'll do the product development on it. And then you can take it to another factory or you can have it made with us. Or you have an idea for a brand, but you don't know what you want it to look like. We can also be your fashion designer, basically. So all of that is like a fee for service that's currently available. But there's a phase two and a phase three. And phase three, I'm really excited about because what we're trying to build is design on demand apparel manufacturing. So think about print on demand, right? Like I want to make a T-shirt of your logo because it's so cute. There's a thousand places I can go online and get that printed on a T-shirt. My, my, I was actually going to ask. I was like, yeah, we can I'm do gonna, that. Yeah, we can do that. Too. You can do that too. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's not that cute, but I like it. But print-on-demand is a huge market. It's a $6 billion market, and it's projected to be a $60 billion market by 2030. So it's, like, big and growing. I have this idea of, like, what if it was design-on-demand? What if I could do more than print, right? right? What if I could, like, change the sleeves? What if I could change the neckline? What if I could, you know, make it cheetah print? And so we're building this set of, like, it's called white label, but it's, like, these designs, right? It's yoga pants, tops, it's... I, a lot of bike stuff because we are where we are. Yep. Um, and you can go on our website and you design it. We have to build this part and you design it. And then you hit print and we make it for you and we ship it to you. And you can make one for yourself or you can make 500 and sell them as your own brand. So we're there's a lot of reasons why, you know, that's a there's a lot that goes into like what mm-hmm. I just described. But um, I mean, we've been working on it for a while. That's so. exciting. Yeah, I think so. It's so that's interesting. So I could is what we like about it, scalable. because everybody wants at scale. scale. Yes. So I think it's scalable. We think it's scalable. I mean, it's cool. Yeah. Right, so, so yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to chat with you about that. I think that would be fun. I, mean, let's... <laughs> I know. I'm like, listen. I just want to make everybody some money, and I want everybody to have an opportunity to feel seen and represented, and like we all do better. When we all do better, right? And it's really about, like, I just want people, because I have been so lucky to make my my career has been just futzing about in art, right? And, yeah, there's been some strategy maybe, and, yeah, I went to school for it. But, like, I get to make up my job all day every day, right? And you kind of get to do that, too. Mm-hmm. And like, what a beautiful gift. And I just really like the idea of, like, other people being able to have access to that opportunity that, like, they have a vision. They want to do the thing. And so anyway, so that obviously I'm like really excited about it. It's it's tough to put yourself out there. <sighs> I mean, I do it. Yeah, but. you know. I mean, it just what do you want to be when you grow up? Right. You know. I'm fascinated by this by this design thing because I think it's really yeah. it's kind of fun and kind of cool to Yeah. I mean, everybody wants to be a designer or everybody, everybody wants, wants to be, to a be designer. you know. Everybody. Think about all the influencers you know. What if they had a clothing line? Right. And like, what if it was direct to consumer for them? It's like Mr. Beast. He's got whatever chocolate bars. And yeah. hundred percent. Because he can. But I mean, apparel is 
oh gosh, I mean, like apparel is a necessary thing. Like you, everybody's got to get dressed today. And all of these sort of micro influencers or all of these people with this idea for small brands, like they're never going to get carried at a big store, you know? I mean, they might if we give them some opportunities, but like it's just so few people who get to enter into the production model. And so for us, we're like, no, make five. Make five of it. Sell it to your friends. Maybe it's terrible. Come back. We'll redesign it and then make 10 more, right? Like you should have the opportunity for trial and error. So that's what we're trying to create. Very cool. So like Fashion Week is great. We love Fashion Week, right? Everybody's so much fun. It's mm -hmm. a great party. It's like culturally enriching. It's really a wonderful opportunity to see the community represent themselves. But like the uh, where I get really excited is like, but what if we were redefining apparel manufacturing in the United States? <laughs> <laughs> what if that's what we were doing? And so it's funny because it's like I went from this like very, very specific niche art background to being like, well, if I want to pay the bills, I guess I'm going to have to become a titan of industry. <laughs> so let's go. So let's go. So let's go. I don't gotta, I, I'm very... not doing anything else. You know what I mean? So this is your full time now. You are you are all For things Interform eight and years. Wow, that's yeah. super. Isn't that crazy? Super fun. I know. I had had like I, the people you get to be involved with too. I mean, like it, it must be inspiring and fun to be around dreamers and yeah. people that are. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm assuming much like actors in Hollywood. There's only a nugget that <laughs> go on to actually. Yeah. It's, it's a yeah. tough world. Yeah, it's really really rough. But like, if you can provide opportunities to. You know, learn. Um, or be like you. You know, you think you like it, and then all of a sudden you get down the path, and like, oh, wow. I like, oh, this. actually, this Ooh, is wow. the worst. I like wearing clothes. Yeah, exactly. You know, and we also do a lot of work with, like, we do a lot of work with Walmart Beauty. We do a lot of work with um, sort of corporate sponsors as well because of our grassroots connection to, you know, a community telling you how it wants to look. And so we function in the beauty space as well because we also have to pay bills. We have to, you know, make these things viable somehow. And it's been really fun to learn all the different ways that you can actually create a use case scenario for the work you're doing that is financially viable in a way that I was never able to do as a curator. I was never, to, I was never able to find a way to be like, you sh should pay for this. <laughs> this, should, this is worth being paid for. So... What are you selling right now? Are you selling anything that you you say you're selling some bike stuff? Um, we're really. selling services. Services. We're selling services. Yeah, and then hopefully somebody else is selling the thing we make. Okay. Yeah. So design as a service. I like these hands. <laughs> I like these hands. <laughs> No, I normally talk with my hands, but I feel like you're doing it for me. <laughs> I was like, um, it's actually sign language, and there's a whole nother layer that I'm saying. Is there <laughs> is? Can I ask like what the what the what the um the cost of something like this costs? Um, yeah, I mean, it depends on what you want to do, right? So, if you want to start a line of pants, okay, you want to, you know, you have the best pant idea. And you don't, but you don't have to do anything about it. You just have this idea. It's going to cost you like $2,500 for us to product develop and like create the intellectual property behind your pants. And then it's going to cost you per unit to manufacture it. Okay. So that's a lot, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a big investment. Um, I mean, it's not compared to the industry. It's almost nothing, yeah, but like, it's not very you know, much money. for, you know, for somebody who's sitting at home in, you know, Springdale right now and they have a pants idea, it seems like a lot. Um, but, you know, you can also just buy the one thing. So you can, I mean, our white label products aren't fully up and running yet, but when they are, you should be able to buy one top or a hundred of the same top. And that's going to cost you $30 or something like that. Oh, wow. Of just that one top. Mm -hmm. And then I put plenty mm -hmm. of good times on it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then. Yeah, and, like, as we get bigger, the unit economics get better. So, like, it gets cheaper. Um, because I understand that, like, okay, I'm, I sell it to you. You sell it to somebody else. I charge you 30. You have to charge 60. But, like, uh, fashion can absorb it, right? I mean, people pay a lot of money for apparel. I mean, people pay, what, $40,000 for an Hermes handbag? It's crazy. You can pay 60 bucks for a t-shirt that's made by, like, local women and is, in, yeah. like, investing in the local community, like, Rude. 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 Get with it. I mean, these handbags, these belts. 
It's, I mean, it's bananas. Bananas. it's bananas. It's bananas. It's bananas. But that's why I'm also like, I don't know, man. There's got to be room here. There's got to be, because the margins, come on. There's got to yeah. be room in this market to play, I think. Yeah, I have a friend who has, um, he has a company called Built, and it is. Um, B-I-L-T? B-Y-L-T. B-Y-L-T, okay. It's um, fashion athletic brand. Yeah, we'll, um, I'll manufacture all of it. Send him over. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's killing it, but hey, but hey, you know what? He should. I mean, he should. He yeah. should. I don't know where he goes. I assume it's I'm. Just, I'm. I guarantee I'm assuming, it's overseas. I'm assuming it has to be. There's just has, nothing here. There's nothing here. Yeah. There's nothing here. Okay, so Fashion Week. It's coming yeah. up. Tell me what, how, what people need to do to go. Do you want people to go? Is it already sold out? It's like mostly sold out. Okay. <laughs> Are you gonna give me a ticket? Yes, something? of course. Okay, no, okay. I, you just have to pick your night. Okay. You know. But yeah, um, I want to go the fun night. Uh, yeah, that's all nights. Oh, I'll all be nights. there. Okay, you know, right, I mean, fun. it is what it is. Okay, fun. I mean, I think that you know we'll do another one in the fall. Um, I love the idea of people coming to see us in Springdale and like learn about the classes. You know, maybe take a class, or maybe come get some shirts made. Okay, so, so you can take it just a class. You don't have yeah. to. You have to join no. the. Mm-mm. So there's just so yeah. there's sewing classes. Mm-hmm. There are. Yeah. What fashion history classes or um, that kind of class? I mean, I could build you one. Okay, you that's great. To. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's all doable. Yeah. We're all making it up all the time, anyway. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it's you know it's really I think the I think the goal <laughs> the real work I have to do over the next few years is sort of like getting people to understand that inner form is like a much bigger creature than just Fashion Week, but also like don't forget about Fashion Week. I still want you to go and love it. Right. Okay. But um but you know, letting people know that we are really trying to think about like industry kind of kind of scaled things. Um and then hopefully being able to like get visibility into other markets. So like I want people from Kansas City coming to our fashion week. I want people from Dallas coming to our fashion week. And they do, but like not in the numbers that I would mm-hmm. like them to. So you want a bigger venue? Is it is it at the momentary this year? It is not. It's at the ledger. It's upstairs. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It's going to be so good. And just so everyone knows, this is the third po- first <laughs> podcast, first official podcast at the Ledger. I believe I can say that. Um, yep. Okay. So right here yep. in the Ledger, yep. we will be doing Fashion Week. Yep. Three nights. Um, like I said, you know, community night on Thursday, avant-garde on Friday, um, industry night on Saturday. So if you want to come shopping, come on Saturday. Um, I believe we have a Walmart fashion show every night because we're partnering with them again this season, and I think it's all like new spring looks, things like that. Um, Walmart's has an interesting history in the fashion and apparel space, but I think this year they rebranded from Walmart Apparel to Walmart Fashion, and okay. we say, get in there, like absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I love a snap. <laughs> I See, I even want to support the big guys. You know, I want everybody to win. We're all doing better when we all win. So, but yeah, so that's so that'll that'll be every night as well. And um, I mean, in general, I think that we're kind of the only you know we're kind of the only organization that does fashion in the region. And so it's funny. It's like I don't know. What do you want to see? Tell us. We'll probably build it. I mean, we are really, really interested in listening to the community and like feeding back into the community because, like I said, I mean, I, this isn't my background. I didn't come to this with like a fashion vision. I came to this with like a I don't know. Let's build something for people to do stuff vision. And so I don't know. What do you want to do? Something. So yeah, we are always sort of thinking about what's the next thing. I love it. <laughs> it's fun. I'm having fun. Like, I am having the time of my life. I will say I know. That. I'm a little jealous of your life. I mean, you know, come work with us. I would love to. Yeah, absolutely. Let's make a TV show. Oh, well, that's exactly, yeah. yeah with all these, uh, with all these, um, oh, my God, Project Runway. I almost forgot the name of the show. Yeah. Um, it is fascinating that all those people are kind of here and coming and coming yeah. to Bentonville. And Bentonville is such a fascinating little place. I mean, the ecosystem's funny, right? Like, the the thing is, five years ago was very, very different to today. And when we launched five years ago, we were supported in a different way. We were a different size. We had, like, a totally different kind of plan for what we were going to do. But as the, you know, there's been a lot of investment into the arts and culture community yeah. and, like, c- culture creation in the region. 
And, you know, at a certain point, it's like, well, how long do we have to pour money on that? Like, are we done yet? Like, is the culture built yet? Is, you know, I mean, Got like, it. how long is that viable? And so, you know, because if it was, if it was like a quality of life thing, right, and we're funding organizations so that they bring people here, well, people are here. I mean, you know, housing's through the roof. It's not, that's not a problem anymore. Mm-hmm. People, like, people are sold. People are here. Yeah. And so houses now, are expensive. And houses are expensive. So it's like you don't have to advertise it as much. You don't have to like create as many shiny objects for people to come be attracted by. And so, and that's why we see like we've really got to find another path forward besides just relying on the same philanthropic ecosystem that everybody else is relying on. Um, and if in the meantime we get to build like a really cool company or a really cool industry, even great, have fun. And bringing, uh, and bringing, um, fashion to America or bringing uh, yeah, manufacturing, manufacturing to yeah. America, yeah. which is what we all say. And then we go right back to. Yeah. And then you look at the price tag and you're like, well, uh, oh, uh, no, that's a lot of money. But it is, you know, <laughs> for the nerd that I am, it's all unit economics. It's all doable. You just got to just got to do it. Well, I am very excited to go to Fashion Week. Well, wait. So how long have you been here? I have been here for now three years. OK. I've been here for three years. Um, kind of. I've been producing television for what twenty years. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, I did a lot of shows, um, and I got out of Los Angeles. I met someone. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason why I'm here, and yeah. I came to this fascinating little place. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has changed in the past even three years. Like, yeah, I was gonna say like the changed. Bentonville you moved to and the Bentonville today. Like, it's it's it's. I tell people all the time how crazy it is to go from. I came here. It was COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, even Blake Street, who helped sponsor this show, by the way. Shout out to thank Lake you Street. Juan. Um, thank you, Juan. <laughs> we appreciate you. And Emily. Juan and Emily. Um, so, you know, I came here. There was nobody at Blake Street, hardly at all. I mean, it was like yeah. an almost empty place. Yeah. Um, I just really loved the vibe. I enjoyed. You could see what the family's building. The Waltons yeah. are building incredible stuff. It's yeah. kind of fascinating. And I love this machine out here. I'm mm-hmm. kind of trying to do the same, not the same thing. Um, but as I sit in this environment and meet people like you mm-hmm. that are doing creative things. It's like, how do I help feed that machine? How do I build a creative machine that helps, mm-hmm. you know, teach people how to tell stories, teach people how to use video, mm-hmm. um, you know, try to make mini shows. I also think that, you know, oh, there's all these brands, there's all these companies out here, but there's, everybody's feeding the Walmart machine, which costs yeah. a gazillion dollars. How yeah. do you make it affordable for people to get their name out there? Yeah. Um, you know, okay, so you built this fashion line. How do you market that yeah, to exactly. someone yeah. for not a hundred million dollars? Even the camera operators around here still want a thousand dollars a day. And it's crazy. Is that good or bad? I mean, it's 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 actually that's probably cheap right here. Yeah. And okay. it's it's obnoxious. Okay. It's you know, I'm sorry, camera people that are local, but like we hire sure. I hire the yeah. most expensive some of the best DPs in the world yeah. to work on a reality show. I mean, they're you yeah. know, they're high, but but not like that. They're not even close. Well, I mean, I think it's so. Now we book them for six, seven weeks or whatever it is. Oh, but yeah. I mean, one, one day. But it's I'm still. I'm going to charge a premium for one day. I mean, I think it's interesting because it's like it's a, uh, you know, this is a, what is Bentonville in 50 years, right? Like what, like do we become a, a metropolis? Do we become like a hub, a city? Like is there, what kind of pull, what kind of gravity pull is there to Bentonville? And I think that. You know, like I said, I grew up on the Illinois River. I've seen I've seen the change of how things were and where they are now. I think a huge element that's missing, which is like so great that you're here and rude. <laughs> Absolutely rude. Um uh that's so necessary is storytelling, right? And storytelling right. about what's happening here outside of here. Right? Because we tell our own stories to ourselves constantly, right? But like if I'm in Chicago, why the hell do I care about fashion in Arkansas? Right. And it's because nobody's telling the story. Yeah. I'm like, we can't tell the story. We're doing the story. <laughs> it's really hard to do and tell at the same time. And I just think like, you know, Los Angeles and New York have the benefit of all of those people in the creative industries have another layer of people in the creative industries mm-hmm. telling those stories. And that's what curating is, right? It's looking at artists and saying, you should pay attention to this artist. This artist is really good. We need people in Bentonville saying, you should pay attention to what's happening in Bentonville. It's really, really good. Agreed. And that's like their own process of authorship, right? And so it's like we need people like you to come in and create that layer that sort of says, that helps us validate outside of the the region. It is, um, 
Yeah, I love it. I don't want to leave. Yeah. I, it's it's so weird. I, I go out of town and I still want to come back. It's like a, it's a very strange little place. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, telling the story of all these people is something that I'm pretty passionate about. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I mean, I'm, do yeah, I mean, I'm no. truly making it up. Yeah, I just, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I started doing this podcast. People are like, oh, you're a podcast producer. I'm like, well, I am now. I got Sounds it. like it. Sounds like it. Oh, I have a podcast. I, I deeply, deeply believe in the power of self-identifying, right? Oh, so for like, sure. Like, I, I'm never going to be a fashion designer if I don't call myself a fashion designer. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm never going to be a podcast maker if I don't call myself. Yeah, I, I was a comic when I was on stage. And people were like, oh, what are you doing? I'm a stand-up comic. Yeah, I mean, 100%. Yeah. And you know? then, you know, and then you do, you become a producer, and you're like, oh, I'm producing. And now yeah. I'm a producer. Oh, he's a producer. Yeah. But in behind my head, I'm like, I'm really faking this whole thing. <laughs> well, and I think that it's like, you know, in other markets, there's like more hoops you have to jump through before you can say, I'm XYZ. But in Arkansas, it's like, I mean, do you want to be? Because maybe now you are. It doesn't mean you're good at it. True. Okay. But you can say you are the thing, and then, you know, try it out, fail in public. My, I'm going to put it on my tombstone. <laughs> Fail in public. Um, Failing is the hardest thing to. Um, it's the know, most. I wasn't the greatest part. comic in the world, but people always they would always go, "Oh my god, that's so hard." And I'm like, "Well, it's, you know, it's it's hard to be if you're, it's hard if you're not funny as well." But it's also yeah, comedy is all about getting on stage and failing. A hundred percent. That's it. You just 100%. get on stage. One day you're great. The yeah. next four times, n people hate you. Yeah, it's fine. I just really love, I love people who haven't reached the end of their journey, who are like, oh, I'm already successful. I'm already good. Everybody already, like, I don't need talent that's been vetted. I want talent that's like, maybe that has some room to grow because that's fun, right? And that's, that's like, you really can get in there on that. It's like, but if I'm, you know, if I'm only bringing in people who are already successful in other markets, like, what's the fun in that? Do you not think that you're going to, um, Produce another line for yourself. Um, I mean, ew, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it's in the works. It's so possible. It's so possible. It it's funny because I'm the only one on my team that doesn't want to, <laughs> and like I'm in charge still. So you know, we probably won't do it while I'm sitting in the chair I'm in, but. Um, it's likely that at some point we realize that we've got some good ideas and we should launch something. So, and when we do, like we've got the apparatus for it, 100%. It was, yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, I just really, really like supporting other people's brands. Dreams. Yeah. Visions. And yeah, and dreams. And like, you know, but I mean, okay, great example. So, like, we are, and not many people know this, but we are the North American repair headquarter for Rafa. Like the bicycle company. Okay, right? so okay. say that again. Okay, yeah, I love it. So Rafa, yes. which is like the best bike gear you can get. If you fall down and you hurt yourself and you hurt your jersey, you mail it somewhere to be repaired. It's to us. Oh, so really? we do all of the repairs for Rafa from the, like nationally. And we love it. And it's like really one lady named Gina, who's a grandma, who's just the best. And she sits right outside my office and she just repairs Rafa all day. So wait, if you rip your Rafa shirt, uh -huh. it can be repaired? Yeah, they have a lifetime repair guarantee. No way. Mm -hmm. What if it ruins? You get another shirt? Yeah, I mean, it, there's like a, there's a threshold to how bad it can be. But like if a seam busts open. Right. Got or if, it. yeah. Or if you, like, so if you wreck and you rip the shirt in half. Yeah. I mean, in half is actually probably easy to fix. Um, <laughs> 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 it's when you like get road rash all the way down. And, okay. But it's, I mean, there's a it's rippled. Yeah. There's a, there's a process for deciding what can be and can't be repaired. But like, do they give you another shirt? No. It's only repairs. It's uh, not like, I feel like Patagonia, like if, oh, the food, yeah. If the sh well, so like a dream, like I want to be the repair headquarter for Patagonia. Do you know what I mean? Like, I want to be the repair headquarter for Cotopaxi. Like, there's why not? Why not? Because that's a lot of jobs, right? Like, that's a lot of people you get to hire to do that. And um, it's so funny because, like, I'm such a flaming liberal and have always been. I've been in the arts since I was 17, yeah. so, like, it is what it is. But I do. When you I, live in cities like that, you just become that person. You just, uh, yeah. I mean. I was it's always so funny here because it's, it's such a, it's kind of saying earlier, so yeah. here it's so. It's, just, it's weird that it's not around you everywhere. Like everything's around you in New York and LA. Yeah. You're not really like diversity is not you're not looking for diversity or feeling like inclusion's a thing. Everybody's kind of included. Yeah, in. you gotta really work at it here. Yeah, you it's gotta really work. It, yeah, it's a whole thing. Um 
But it's funny because, I mean, the one thing that I will give conservatives credit for is, like, jobs creators. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like the bigger the company gets, I'm like, I'm a jobs creator now, and I love it. Um, but, I mean, it's true. It's a, it's a whole thing. I am really, really excited about that aspect of it. And it's also very hard and very expensive, right? Which is, like, I understand how you become a fiscal conservative. Um, but, so, like, you know, those kinds of professional uh, services, right? Like, I want to do that. I want to scale that. I want to create more of that because that is, I think, there's more growth opportunity there than if I start a fashion line that's like, you know, my take on a cardigan or whatever because I feel like let somebody who has that dream do that. You know what I mean? But I don't know. Yeah. Fun. It does make sense. Fun. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's all this stuff is so hard. <laughs> It's really hard. It's real it's hard. It's really, really hard. It's so funny because people, when I first started, I was like, oh, I want to do um, uh, apparel manufacturing in the United States. People were like, oh, my God, why? Like, it can't be done. Don't And don't tell me I can't do something. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't. the worst thing you could do is tell me I can't. I'm like, well, it's going to be done because I won't be told I can't because I'm a little feral, right? Like, I was like <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? You said I can't. Okay, bet. I'm going to build a factory. <laughs> so you built a factory. <laughs> Um, depending on how you think of the word factory, the answer is yes. We have a workroom. Okay. Um, we have two women that are full time and uh, a couple women that help part time. We do a lot of bikinis. We make a lot of bikinis. It's good. I was really lo looking for mine. Yeah, they're tiny. Oh, it's good. Yeah, like and the that. margin on a tiny bikini is great. Like you can sell those for a lot of money. So, yeah, so we do that. What's um, the name of the bikini line? It's Demon Bikini. Demon Bikini. Mm -hmm. And she's local. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. And she sells at trade shows and she's, I mean, she keeps us busy, you know, but it's great because I, we don't want to go, I don't want to go on the road and go to a trade show and hawk a brand, you know, like I would rather stay. She does that. Mm -hmm. You have to, you have to, if you want to like successfully launch a brand. So is that kind of the steps to launching a brand? So mm -hmm. first you make it, you do have the idea, but then mm -hmm. you have to go on the road. And hit trade shows. Yeah. Or important trade shows. Yeah. There's some companies. And then you just get recognized one day, hopefully, or you just, it takes off? So. Because I'm always fascinated. Like, I forget. How does it work? Well, it's yeah. like, you know, you go to, like, the farmer's market. I forget what, like, there was, like, that jam company. And uh -huh. it was, like, the two brothers, and they sold their jams. And all of a sudden, it was, like, stone something, stone wall, stone. No idea. Stone wall, like, jams. They make uh -huh. jams. And all of a sudden, they exploded. And Are, like, billionaire like, jam makers? Oh, yeah. Now they're billionaires, probably. They're in every store ever. I mean, yeah, let's do that. That sounds great. Yeah, it sounds great. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it, there's a couple companies we work with that – so, interestingly enough, in the apparel space, there's a lot of companies that will help you with brand identity and, like, brand and, like, product placement into other markets. It's uh, – they kind of describe themselves as, like, record labels for apparel companies. And so you can work with one of them, and they can make sure that you're at all the right trade shows. And really, you start at boutiques. Right. Or you go direct to consumer. Um, and then if you get really, really lucky, you'll get picked up by like a target or like a I mean, but you won't. You might. It's an interesting thing. Um, and so, of course, I have like a lot of opinions about how we could be working with Walmart differently. Um, and I think if I keep my you know, if I keep plugging away at it long enough, like we'll probably see some of that happen. OK. Um, and how are you currently working with Walmart? Um, so we work with the beauty department okay. really, really closely. Um, and we also, we work with apparel. I mean, apparel will do runway shows and things like that. And so, but it's largely kind of in a like community space, right? It's not like, uh, it's, we're sort of getting into more of an industry conversation, but you know, I tell people like the goal, if you want to become an apparel brand, your goal should never be Walmart. Like, don't aim there. You will go out of business, right? Don't aim there. Because that's, like, the scale of that is wild. Bonkers. Yeah. And then also the price per unit is, like, not great for, you know, for small their, things. Their, their whole thing. Yeah. And, I mean, they're really good at it. You know, I like, no, like, fantastic. But not everybody should go there. That's not, that's not where you start. Right. Um, but, you know, you can build your own brand online. Lives in is a great example. Do you know Lives in? Mm -mm. They're based here. Okay. Shout out to Lives in. What up, Lives in? We also do their repairs. 
and they are like a great example of, you know, Andrew has just worked incredibly hard to get his brand in front of all of the right people. Um, I have this like a documentary about them. They go to trade shows. He's in outdoor magazines, like you know, and they're just like they're pants. They're active wear pants, and they're fabulous. Um, and he went from very very small to like getting bigger. Um, and we love that Livzin is here, right? And we want more people like Livzin to be here. I want more brands, more, more, more. I don't know. I just think, why not? Got what else it. are we gonna do? You know? And they they sell more online. Mm-hmm. Than it's online. all online, basically. Yeah, that's yeah. what built. I think they might be carried at like Moose Jaw or okay. Yeah, I think that they are in some retailers. Um, but yeah. Yeah, built. Uh, my buddy with built. He's. Yeah. I think it was. It started like as an underwear company. It was like, mm-hmm. and then it kind of took off, and then they. You know, they started with one thing, yep. and then that took off, and then they started doing clothes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, and they just now it. have their first yeah. storefront as of this year. Oh, and, fantastic! And then, right. Where's he at? It's in Newport, but he's it, my buddy lives here. Oh, my buddy lives here, which is amazing. Oh. Um, and then his other partner lives in Newport. Oh. I'll let him chat with you. Yeah, I mean, he I'll needs invite to... him. I'll invite him to the show. No, um, we do product development. Um, yeah, <laughs> and then. Um, but yeah, and then now they have their first storefront and all of that, so it's yeah. it's it's moving, moving on up. Do you think it's sustainable the ecosystem here, the cultural ecosystem? The cult. What do you mean? Just like, do you think it's the you know like for for your for producing, is it sustainable here or for I don't know I I think I about don't, it a lot. I you mean just for almost anything? I yeah. think it's like uh, I think it's it, like everyone else. I just think it's coming. Yeah. I mean the wave is coming. It's yeah. you know if we. If we look at, I mean, I was just talking about Blake Street earlier, but just the parking lots. Yeah. I mean, a year ago, I could have mm-hmm. parked anywhere, mm-hmm. and now they're full. And it seems ridiculous because it still is a small town. I think I felt like it was a bigger place yeah. than what it was because I kind of go to the same five places here, and I'm totally happy with it. But it's a metropolitan feel. It's as a metropolitan in these feel, very specific but it's places. a very <laughs> yeah in very specific places. It feels like a lot of things. Um, but yes, it's. It, I think it's all coming. We we yeah. all say that like if you can build it right now and hang on yeah, long for enough, sure. mm-hmm. that you're just going to. There's not. There's. I mean, I when I first got here, mm-hmm. I'm not like even a Pilates guy, but I do love doing Pilates. Uh-huh. Um, but there was like one studio it was a gazillion dollars, like 105 mm-hmm. dollars a day. But you're not doing that. Wow. Um, there's a new one. That's what I mean. Okay. So yeah. like mm-hmm. after two years, I was like, how is there not one? There's not. So you start looking around, and yeah. this is like a place where there's not. Well, now there's two of something. But when I yeah. first got here, there was not like there was wanted. not two of anything. Yeah. So if you wanted to become someone's competition, you could do it. Yeah. You know, like so you can you could create things here. So yeah. look, I'm hoping that I'm creating this production company yeah. that to tell stories and brands and all of that on an affordable level. And you know, because yeah. I I I think leaning into technology and AI. Oh, yeah, how are you doing? Whoa, oh, what's no. going on? I think leading <laughs> le- leaning into the technology with AI. Yeah. And also the idea that you can't shoot very quality stuff with an iPhone yeah. is wrong. Oh, really? Like, I mean, no, it's very right. I mean, I'm sorry, like, you can shoot with an iPhone. You, like, I can shoot you with can. an iPhone. You can. Like, Amazing. there's okay. no, you don't need Great. a fancy camera yeah. anymore. And I, camera operators hate when I say this, but it's, yeah. it's just true. I mean, mm-hmm. this camera, you put it on a fancy mode and you go down and, mm-hmm. you know, you can even put it through AI and have them reprocess it. I mean, mm-hmm. It is changing the game of being able to make things affordable, mm-hmm. um, and just the you know like if you shoot with a DSL, sure it's beautiful, sure. but just the processing of it all, it's probably like manufacturing. Uh-huh. The putting it into the computer <clears throat> takes seven hours. Yep. Then that's you know mm-hmm. it takes t- it takes a lot of money and more money it takes a lot of mm-hmm. time. Time is money. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of the stuff that I'm trying to do right now is iPhone first, or yeah. you know. Or the DJI like personal cameras first and going yeah. and shooting stuff instead of overloading, you know, like I mean, there's camera something time. to be said about like packing a lot of skill into like having a very broad skill set in a small team. Because I think that like everybody has built for scale. So it's like, oh, I can do this one thing at like at a huge scale, right? And I'm gonna but I'm gonna do the one thing. <laughs> <laughs> right? right, you come here to, for editing only, right? Or you come here for right. shooting only. But like, I think that like being a multi hyphenate, like being able to like, oh, we'll product develop, we'll fashion design, and we'll manufacture. Like yep. we'll do all of it, little. Yep. Right, and then prices become different. And it yeah, I, different. I, I'm yeah. on the same level. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm 
taking people through a visionary process, a development mm-hmm. stage, and you know, just whatever de- we do development, yeah. and then we figure out what your story is, mm-hmm. and then we figure out a shoot, and then and then we shoot it, and we shoot it on iPhones, or we shoot it on yeah. a thing, and we get good audio. And I've just shot pilots for all kinds of TV shows through the day, so I've, I'm a I'm a master yeah. of none, but I'm except for maybe oh, interviewing people. But I, I I'm really good at a lot of different things. It's what I was gonna say before the cameras were rolling. Um, I'm sixty percent good at a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm sixty percent. Right? Yeah. Um, and then my team is like eighty percent good at fewer things, yeah. right? And then some people are like, I'm a hundred percent good at one thing. <laughs> The straight A students are the one thing, yeah, and I mean, the I think D students are really good at. I mean, I think it's totally acceptable to get like I'm gonna get super far down the field on all of this stuff, and then I'm gonna hire somebody who actually knows what they're doing to kick it over the field goal. I think it has to be done that way. I think that's just entrepreneurship, right? It's like I have enough self esteem. <laughs> I have enough misguided self-esteem yep. to tell me <laughs> <laughs> I can do all uh, of this. My inflated ego will get me only so far, but <laughs> it's great. Like... I'm always like, listen, man, you know what? Try it out. Try it out. It's my whole mantra. And so that is, yes, I can bring it back to Fashion Week and say, like, if you come to Fashion Week, the one thing you can sit in the audience and know is that like you should really love that you're watching a lot of people try. Right. And they're trying in public. And like trying it's in true. public is scary. It is. And a lot of these guys know? are not. I mean, you're an extrovert. I'm an extrovert. Um, oh, but they aren't. They are not. No. They're fashion people that yeah. have thought about the sitting idea behind a, 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 so, yeah. a sewing machine. No. Almost. And this is their, you know, this is their creative outlet. This is their voice. Yeah. And like, come see it this season and then come see it next year and see the difference and see the growth. And like, I just think that's really a, really a beautiful thing. And it's something that like fashion weeks don't do that. That's not what fashion weeks are for really in other cities. Um, this is not what New York fashion week is for, right? Certainly. But in Northwest Arkansas, I was like, well, I don't have to build it the way everybody else built it. I'm going to build it for here. And for here, it's all about like, let's grow talent. Right. So that, like, let's be able to do our own thing very, very well here as it grows, I think. Yeah. Well, I'm very excited for Fashion Week. Give me the date again. March yep, 20th. March 28th, 29th, and 30th. 30th. I think you'll be there on the 30th. 30th? That's the... Ooh, we're going to sold out. Oh. Yeah, we're going to figure it out. I'll send a bar. I mean, I'll just, I'll, maybe I'll put on a skirt or something. <laughs> <laughs> don't I mean don't tempt us with you're a good not, time you, you know, get thrown I on could, the runway really you, fast I can tell you you know like <laughs> do not I've got great knees oh fantastic I've got great knees yeah that's so specific I don't know if that's true or not I bet it is that's my guess I might have really good knees well Robin yes thank, thank you, you so much thank you so much for coming on the Good Time Show I'm super excited this was once again the first podcast right here in the ledger the Good Time Show is sponsored by Blake Street We thank them very much for all of that. I'm super looking forward to Fashion Week. And thank you once again. Thank you for going on this journey with me. It's a lot. You're a good time. (laughs) And I hope everybody else had a good time. I was too. All right. Okay. Well, that's our show. If you didn't get a chance to watch the episode, check it out on YouTube and Spotify. You can also listen to The Good Time Show on Apple Podcasts or any other platform. We are always trying to grow our Planet Good Times community, so subscribe and follow us at Good Times Us on almost all social media platforms. This episode was presented and recorded live at Blake Street House Sound Lounge in Bentonville, Arkansas, a social club where people from all walks of life come together just to be themselves and make the community a better place. Till next time, good times, everybody.